Surprisingly, a study of the ancestry of American auto racing reveals that a largely forgotten quarter-mile oval track located in, of all places, Norwood, Massachusetts, figured prominently in the foundation and growth of today's multi-billion dollar auto racing industry. What is the connection between Norwood Arena and legendary tracks like Daytona International Speedway in Florida, Talladega Super Speedway in Alabama, and Martinsville Speedway in Virginia? The quest for answers to these questions uncovered a tight-knit fraternity of old-time drivers, officials, and race fans with engaging stories to share about a bygone era in American sports history. Norwood did end up playing an enormous role in NASCAR's history. Norwood was the hub of, of NASCAR racing in New England. If you could run Norwood, you could run anywhere. Norwood Arena, for some reason, was a breeding ground for the best race car drivers, I believe, going anywhere in the country. If you won Norwood Arena, you could go anywhere. You won Norwood, you won Norwood on Saturday, you won two in a row at Norwood, you must be really, really good. This eclectic mix of characters came from different socioeconomic backgrounds, but shared a similar passion for speed, competition, and prize money. They were men who built, raced, crashed, and rebuilt their own vehicles, then did it all again the next week, or even the very next night. Norwood Arena had a way of making champions out of the guy next door. No, it was advertised as the fastest quarter mile in the East. And it was fast. It was just like you were in the middle of a bomb explosion. There was all that noise and fury going on, and you, you're watching this guy in front of you and the other guy in front of you, and two guys beside you and two guys behind you, and trying to drive where you want to go. I remember big crowds. The, the grandstands ran almost the entire way around the track, and they'd fill them. These were men of steel who lived life on the edge, hurtling hunks of metal around in circles in a death-defying and occasionally a death-inducing drama. You could get hurt at the Norwood Arena. We had the official racing uniform like this, a t-shirt. Robots were recommended. Nobody could weld, so we didn't have any robots. Uh, doors had to be tied, closed. Just take our belts off, <laughs> put them around the door so you could get in and out of the car. It was just very scary. It was, yeah, a few times I saw some awful accidents and all the way. I mean, the sudden stop, the potential for the sudden stop was definitely there. More than a few people uh, paid a price at that place. We'd run Thursday night in Burlington, Vermont, Friday night in Albany, Saratoga, or Stafford, Saturday night at Norwood, Sunday afternoon at Thompson, and then 90 miles an hour to Utica to catch the feature at night. Always at the end of the day, when I looked in the mirror, I saw myself as a race car driver. Through this film, you'll meet a few of these American originals, including Norwood Arena's own Pete Hamilton and Don McTavish, both of whom left Norwood for the national spotlight, with one man living his dream of winning the legendary Daytona 500 and the other stream dying in a spectacular crash on the same stretch of asphalt. This is the tale of the rise and fall of a local short track nicknamed the Little Daytona. This is the story of Norwood Arena Speedway. Norwood Arena, racing through time. This is my track, I love it. I'm 65 years old. If Norwood Arena was still there, I feel as though I'd still be racing.